Hey guys, Sovereign Source City, welcome to a new video. So today we have five new sovereigns to take us to 95 out of 100. Uh, depending on when I release the video, which order, it might be a little bit later than that, but on the way to the 100 sovereigns. And uh, yeah, here we have a little collection. So I want to talk today a little bit about expectations as a seller. And we'll obviously have a look at the sovereigns as we go. So I got these five for a little bit below spot, actually. These are the cheapest sovereigns I've bought for a few months. Um, not the cheapest ever, but cheapest in recent months. And yeah, the seller has uh, quite a substantial gold collection. Wanted to realize the profits, I guess, and cash out on the private market, on the second-hand market, and was selling them, yeah, if you were buying one or two, you know, not as uh, cheap, but if you bought uh, a bundle, obviously it's less work for the seller. And they've, uh, yeah, they've released a fair few coins over the last few months. So it was nice to be able to pick these up. Now they are just bullion sovereigns. I've not got any uh, particularly special years here, but um, we've got a nice Veilhead Victoria here. And yeah, we have uh, picked up a few sovereigns. So. In terms of expectations as a seller, if you want to have a look around before you're selling a coin, you might go to a few places like eBay, you might use some sort of marketplace or forum or something like that, or you might look on some dealers' websites. So when you do, you're gonna see a variety of prices. You might see some slightly higher, some slightly lower. Now, when it comes to selling, you, have to consider a few different things you know how quickly would you like to sell and how much effort would you like to have on your part before you sell so if you want like the least effort then if you have a local coin shop or a local dealer look at the color of that one uh, if you have a local coin shop or a local dealer then just walking in there and giving them the coins and taking your money would presumably be, be the least effort there are some companies, especially in the UK, where you can just post your gold to them. And then when they've had a look at it, they will send you the money to your bank. And uh, yeah, whilst these are convenient, they're not going to pay you the top end market price on eBay. You know, if you're having a look for a, a 1912 gold sovereign like this one, maybe today the melt value is 347, 348 pounds, something like that. If you go to eBay, maybe one sold for 400. So you can't go to a dealer expecting to get 400 when it is you know, just a bullion sovereign. And remember the dealers have to get their lights on, they have to get their security and staff paid, they have to get all the marketing done. You know, They have a, a business to run and lots of costs involved. So there is obviously a trade-off. You get the convenience of a quick sale you know, a trusted dealer and all smooth and efficient. And they get the convenience of buying gold cheaper than what they can sell it for. And, you know, both parties therefore gain from the transaction. But if you were to sell at the top end highest price, they're going to buy at that price. Then they've got to somehow sell it and keep a, a business going. You know, it's just not going to work. So, if you have something fancy, maybe you've got some proof coins, then again, unless there's certain special years, you're probably not going to realize a lot more than spot price with a lot of dealers. Some you might. Um, some maybe smaller dealers can afford to do that. You know, they can afford to sit on the coins a little bit longer. But the bigger dealers, they're probably just going to offer, you know, around about the spot price, um, especially if you've got some... Remember, there's, there's different types of coins. So a proof coin is the finish of the coin. These are just bullion, but a proof coin has a certain finish to it. So just because a coin is low mintage doesn't mean it's going to be popular or valuable. If I was to mint one coin today, it doesn't mean that there's gonna be a big demand for it across the world. Sure, there is only one in the whole world, but who really cares? So just be wary that there are some coin marketing companies that I've heard them referred to as, and 
they're yeah they're marketing rare coins of only five thousand maybe two thousand but does that mean everybody wants them not necessarily so the the key thing to think about really is you make your money when you buy you're not making the money when you sell you're making the money when you buy so hopefully you've held on for a long enough time to realize that uh, the price has gone up and therefore make some nice gains so what we were saying we've got a trade-off between convenience and the price you might achieve you could get somebody else to do the work like the dealers and therefore you do minimal work, you get minimal money, dealer gets their cut, or you could do more work. So you could make a nice listing, you could present the coins well, take some good photos, and providing you've got you know a bit of trading history or feedback somewhere, you might be able to sell them on the second hand market and you'll take a little bit more profit there, but you'll do a little bit more work. So when people are talking about selling fractional gold, like your 10,000 and things, sure, it is easy to sell You know, a small piece of gold. There is a lot more people that can afford the price of a 10th ounce or a one gram bar than there are that can afford one ounces. But if you want a, a sizable amount of money, like I struggle to see how anybody in the UK is living on less than the price of an ounce of gold a month, just due to the cost of living. Yeah, the, the, it's possible if you've paid off your mortgage or you don't have a rent, um, perhaps living with a family member or something. But if you're you know, running a house and living, eating, etc., you're gonna be using at least a sovereign, sorry, at least a one ounce coin per month in terms of value at the current, uh, current rates. So if you're gonna be selling 10, so you need to sell 10 of them. If you sell at the low enough price, any bullion will sell quickly, but then you're gonna lose out those premiums. So you need to consider that your time is also worth something. Maybe uh, maybe you undervalue it, maybe you overvalue it, but if you're going to do 10 different transactions for the same one ounce of, of gold, it's gonna take you a hell of a lot longer if you need you know, a sizable amount of money, like if you're Say if your boiler breaks and you've no heating and you need a new one and it's not under insurance, for example, you're going to be looking at, yeah, an ounce of gold, maybe two, depending on how much work is needed. And uh, in that sense, you know, is a tenth ounce really going to help? Like is sort of a small coin, you know, you're going to have to sell multiple of them. Um, maybe it will. It depends, you know, but just consider these things before you are coming to sell. So you need to price competitively. If a dealer has these five coins for sale, a trusted reputable dealer, and they're at 360 pounds, and you come along with your five coins that might be very similar, but you're an unknown person on the internet trying to sell them for even more money, I'm just gonna go to the trusted dealer every time. But if you're substantially cheaper, you know, if you're coming in at 345 pounds, then okay, I'm I'm a bit more interested. You know, I can say 15 pounds on five sovereigns, then uh, that starts to add up, you know, it's a little bit more money and I could buy another gram of gold with the money. So it's always worth considering your exit with any investment. You know, thankfully with coin collecting, if you're doing it more as a hobby and just collecting stuff that you like, you're always gonna have an intrinsic value compared to a lot of hobbies where you know, you might buy these items for hobbies, you know, whether it's sports equipment or whatever that could be, you know, various hobbies around, then you're unlikely to realize much of that money back when you come to sell. So that's today's little, uh, little rambling as I knock the camera everywhere. So that's today's little rambling. Just remember to consider your exit strategy and have some realistic expectations when you come to sell. What I would say, if you have never sold or bought, um, sorry, if you've never sold any gold or silver, then it might be an idea just to try selling a few little pieces here and there. Um, maybe just some lower value silver items and just to get a feel for it really. Um, some people are buying and selling online all the time. Some people maybe haven't. So it's always good practice to practice when you don't need to. 
and obviously when you don't have the pressure of time so not worth selling to lose money I don't think but if you are able to make a little bit of profit here and there just get used to the idea of uh, perhaps doing a few trades could be a good idea to test out your exit strategy so for me personally my first gold purchase was an ounce and four sovereigns uh, back in 2018 about five years ago now four or five years ago and I basically bought waited for I can't remember if it was quite a year or maybe just less price went up about 900 pounds up to 1300 pounds and so I sold obviously took a few hundred pounds profit and also I didn't need to sell I just wanted to test you know can you actually buy and sell and and realize some profits so for me it was a useful step hope you enjoyed the video talk to you in the comments